for your Real Estate Minute with Mark LaRue from the Cardinal Realty Group. We're going to have a bit of an issue today, I think. I'm a landlord and I have tenants and I'd like to talk about the fact that the regulations for landlords, tenants are confused in Quebec, in my opinion. They're not, they don't protect the landlord and I know everybody out there is saying the landlord doesn't need protection, but the landlord needs to offer a service. And in order to do so, we need the laws to be adjusted. So Rhonda, I don't think we're going to argue, but there is definitely two sides to this coin. So on the one hand, you have tenants, and on the other hand, you have landlords. Um, the, the laws typically protect the tenants more than the landlords, but they do protect landlords as well. Example, if your tenant doesn't pay you, the, re the rental board is very quick to have them evicted within a couple of months. Uh, so that's something we can count on as landlords, which is which is helpful since the rent is the number one thing that we're counting on as landlords. Okay, but a couple of months can often, by the time you get to a couple of months, if the person, if the person owes me from May till September and they pay May, it triggers them back into not being in default. They're still in default for the months that, they, that they're missing. So the trick here is not to wait that long. So when someone is, uh, there's a magical number, when someone is 21 days late, Okay. Uh, you can open a file and, and request to have them evicted for non-payment. Okay. Uh, and 21 days late is a pretty serious offense if the person doesn't have an excuse like they were in the hospital this whole time or, uh, you know, which, which would be understandable. But uh, most cases, someone who doesn't pay you for 21 days doesn't have a very good excuse. Uh, so that would be cause for eviction. And that might happen within a month and a half, two months of you opening the file. Okay. So that said? Yeah. When I am able to raise your rent, let's say every year, or we have a year year contract between us, and I want to raise your rent at the end of that year, yeah. we've got a very minimal amount that we can raise. Rent increases are very low indeed, um, and it might take you uh, years and years and years to, to get the rent, especially if the rent is low. It's funny because the, the, the more the rent is high, the amount, the dollar amount that you can raise it is, is, is higher. It's higher, it's a percentage. It's a percentage. So if you have someone who's paying $600 a month, uh, then at the end of a year, if you raise them $12 a, a month, that's probably you're, you're close to the limit. You could ask, you know, uh, for a, a, rent, a raise of $15 a month, uh, except that if the tenant contests, you know, right. the, the, this would go to the board and they would decide what the rent increase is going to be. That leaves the landlord in a position where they can't raise your rent more than $100 or $150 in 10 years. So then the tenants are complaining because their kitchens aren't updated. And even if you update the kitchen, there's a limit to how much I can, I can raise you. So I can't really cover my costs, but my tenant needs a new kitchen. There's some really interesting things you can do, uh, Rhonda. For example, if someone is requesting a new kitchen, or for example, if you go over and you say, you know, this kitchen is, is very old, wouldn't you prefer a new kitchen? And that person says, I'd like a new kitchen. You say, what would you be willing to pay as an increase in rent for me to come and renovate the kitchen? If you can negotiate that amount, say $50 and I'll renovate the kitchen and in a small apartment, a kitchen renovation could be six, seven hundred, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. Right. And you raise the rent $50 or $60 a month to compensate. Um, that increases your, your building's value by the equivalent of the, the six to $7,000 that you, you just spent. So a raise in, in, uh, in revenue is going to mean an increase in value of your building, which you can use to refinance. When you sell, you'll get it back as well. Plus, every month you'll have 50 or $60 more. Okay, so that makes sense. When you vet a, a tenant, what is the, what are you, if I was going to call you up and say, Mark, yeah. I need to rent or I, I'm looking for somewhere to rent, how does it work? Right, so we rent for our clients and we use services uh, that are going to vet tenants for us. They're going to look into the criminal history, the financial history. Uh, the ability to pay the rent and also to see if they've been to the real estate board before. Some people have uh, taken cases there and in cases where they haven't paid their rent in the past and they have this uh, like a criminal record of their rental history, if you will, uh, that could work against them. So all of these things sort of come up when we do background checks. I also, a tip for those of you who are, are signing leases and such, I insist on two signatures. I've had one signature and then the husband defaults but the way, like, you know what I mean? Like we, with both signatures, it's really tough to back out and cause a fuss for the landlord if both signatures are there. And they have to be solidarily responsible for the lease. So that's definitely an added layer of protection. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Any other tips and tricks? Um, well, 
I would say that that keeping a good relationship, a good uh, communication, uh, open communication between tenant and landlord allows for you to identify potential problems, identify opportunities as well. Um, and so if you're going to be a landlord, I would suggest to be someone who's uh, in communication with their tenants and to be act proactive. And as a landlord, you need to have backup rent. If you, if you, you need to be able to cover your rent when your tenant doesn't cover their rent. So that would cause a huge stress on, on your personal life if you can't cover the rent that you've got out there, like if the well, person can't pay. That's a great point. And Rhonda, there's so many things that I would, I would say to people who want to become landlords. Uh, in preparation for that move to to become someone who's going to have a, a duplex or triplex and rent it out, there's so many just common sense things. But when you're 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 becoming a landlord, there's a lot of tips and tricks yes. that you need to know. And you got to look at it as another job. It is a job. You're making money, whether you're taking home that money every month or you're just increasing your your asset base with with them with your tenants paying your capital. It's a, it's a job. Don't look at it as anything else. If you think you're going in there and you're going to sit on your laurels, that's not going to happen. And so it depends. If you have two, three, four, five units, uh, you're probably managing that yourself. But when you have 10, 15, 20, you're most definitely getting someone else to do that for you. Uh, so a management company is something that's going to eat into your profit a little bit, but it's also going to free up your time. And when to make that switch and how to make that switch is one of those things that I would say uh, tenants need, uh, landlords need to know. All right, if you have questions about that, Mark LaRue can help you. He's from the Cardinal Realty Group. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Rhonda.